Hello everyone, over on back online again. Um, my chair makes so much noise, I hate it. Maybe I should make a crowdfunding campaign to get me a new one. <clears throat> okay, um, today in this video I want to tell you something more about programming gadgets. In fact, this will be um, the first tutorial where we start um, with, with some very small steps in programming gadget. The gadget system you already know from Oberon is a very sophisticated system to interact with Oberon itself. Not just from the text tracks, but um, you can build real huge and sophisticated um, GUIs um, for the user to interact with the system. And uh, this is quite complex stuff and we have to approach uh, or uh, climb Mount Impossible in very small steps. <clears throat> because I can tell you I had a die hard time in the last weeks um, to get the function of um, the gadget programming into my brain. When you, when you cope with this stuff and, and you begin to understand how it works, it's really simple because when you first start to understand the system, then you already have understood uh, almost everything of the system. But um, as Tom Petty says, learning to fly is the hardest part. Coming down is the hardest thing. And um, I try to make my tutorials in a way that I can give you the possibility that you approach this goal very softly. So that you can follow what I'm saying. Okay. I already switched on my Oran system and let's start with the first steps in gadget programming. Here we are. While I'm talking about gadget programming, I want to introduce, introduce you to two um, quite comfortable and important tools, namely the gadget panel and the Columbus object inspector. Um, so if you follow my tutorials, you will learn to deal with these very important um, tools, um, let's say, on the fly. Okay, first we click with the left mouse button here on this document button and we choose Gadgets Panel. The Gadgets Panel is a collection of gadgets itself that you can place uh, wherever you want on the screen. And um, to be more professional in our approach, we're going to make first um, a container for our uh, gadgets and this will be a panel. So click again here with the left mouse on this button and choose next panel. Okay, now we have a next panel. It has no name. The name would be here on the nameplate. We can fill it right now. Let's say we're going to make it test.panel. And this is the name the panel is saved on on disk when you click on on store the store button here is a, a little um, obfuscated but we're going to fix it in a few seconds okay we can um, use the middle or the left mouse button to click on the rim no sorry the middle mouse button to click on the rim and to drag the window around let's place it here okay um yes um, placing gadgets on the screen is done uh, normally by defining first the place where you want to place place where you want to place okay um, the gadget this is done by clicking and placing the carrot of your mouse so let's say we want to place our first gadget right here so if you click with the mouse here and then we can change, uh, we can uh, look for all those gadgets here. You see gadgets like buttons, I think you can imagine what a button is, CD tracks, this is a collection of buttons uh, organized in two rows, a calendar, captions, it's just text, checkboxes you already know, you have graphical elements like circle, you have a clock and stuff like that. Um, for our first tutorial we start with something very simple, let's choose a color picker. So. Place your uh, mouse pointer on the color picker and click with the middle mouse button and you see we have a color picker here. You can uh, use the middle mouse button to drag it around like um, everything else here on the screen. So um, the second gadget we want to 
place here, let's say right here, will be a circle. Okay, now we have a circle. We can move it a little down. Okay. Now we have two elements or gadgets. Um, if we want to do more than drag and round the sketches, there's a very cool tool you can use. This is Columbus. Columbus is an object inspector that shows you all the attributes of the gadgets and um, you can also define commands that are um, transmitted through the object, uh, through the um, overall internal uh, messaging system. So objects can communicate with each other and tell, for example, something like uh, please change your color to yellow or please grow or please shrink or please change your position. This is all done by a messaging system. This is really very crucial. And this, this was the main point why I had a die-hard time in understanding Oberon, because this messaging system you really have to swallow. There's no way around. <clears throat> okay, but for now we keep it simple. Um, Columbus, um, when you click here, is started. And it takes uh, the first element, it finds that it's selected. So let's select, for example, the circle here. You know, I hope you memorize it, selecting a gadget is by clicking with the right mouse button. Okay, so, okay, circle selected, now we click with our left mouse button on Columbus. So, this is Columbus, the object inspector. What you can see here, you have fields like name, um, attributes like colors, you can uh, define patterns, you can say the circle should be closed or filled and you can specify new attribute names. This is um, in the start window of, um, of Columbus always visible because um, this is the attribute window. This is set by default uh, as a start window. If you click on link you can see what objects are linked to this gadget. So what the hell does it mean? I tell you just in a few words. Um, Oberon is distinguishing between visual, uh, visual gadgets and model gadgets. A visual gadget is something like this, something you can see, and a model gadget is um, some kind of logic storage behind it. So you can uh, link almost every gadget with a logical model. For example, you can um, place um, a scroll bar or slider and you can link it to the object gadget integer. So that the value of the slider is stored in the integer record field of the integer object. Okay, but uh, we're gonna not we um, we gonna do anything about this now. Um, the next very interesting um, window is coordinates. With coordinates, you can change actually the position and the size. For example, you see here. X and Y coordinates we can, for example, change X to, let's say, 86. And when we press apply, you can see it has moved. Okay, let's place it at 120 and minus 70. Okay, I can see that the coordinates are counted from the from the top and the Y coordinates are negative. This is something special in Oberon. This was derived from the, as far as I know, from the Ceres workstation that Niklas were designed, which had a frame buffer for the, for the screen that counted the coordinates in that way. Okay, but this is not of any interesting for us now. We can also change width and, and height, so we can make an ellipse out of it. I, well, as for, at least I think so. So let's say we make 64 for the width and nothing is happening. Hmm. Okay, so it seems that both parameters have to be the same. It stays a circle. Okay, <clears throat> so you can change attributes and uh, uh, a lot of objects uh, Things uh, here with uh, with Columbus, 
and you also can issue commands. You see this command field here. That means when the object is activated, for example, a button is clicked, then this command is issued to the messaging system <coughs> and can be directed to another object. And this is what we're going to do now. This is uh, really our first uh, programming approach without writing real code. We just are using the messaging system to change the color of this circle. But before we start, we want to say the circle should be filled. Okay, now it's black. We want to give it a name because without a name we can't identify it in the messaging system. Let's call it my circle. Uh, we don't need a command here for the circle. We need a command for the color picker instead. Okay, I think that's all for now. We click apply. So now we deselect um, the circle by pressing F2 and we select the color picker and we uh, click here in the upper parts of the window on the magnifier glass and now Columbus got the, part, uh, the color picker so we give it a name my color picker name is really not important but um, just to be consistent we should fill in a name uh, anyway always because you will need it somehow. Okay, and here you can see uh, the command that is issued. We're going to change this now. And we're going to use a command from the module gadgets that is uh, aimed to change the attributes of other objects. So we type gadgets set. That means set the attributes of another object. Um, and the the goal or the aim of the object is the circle. So we write my circle and the attribute field is color. I show you um, that the color field already is there. I forgot this to explain when I uh, had the circle in Columbus open. I'm gonna show you um, in a few seconds. Okay, and this here, the hash sign and cal is a, is a macro. The macro is automatically expanded by the messaging systems and the, the picked up color here from the color picker is automatically expanded into this macro. And so the information of the chosen color gets to the circle. Okay, I think that's all for now. So let's click apply. Now I'm going to select the circle again just to show you. We have a field here that is named color, and this is what we're going to change. Okay, now um, I hope this will work. Let's click with the middle mouse button here on the color picker, and you get a field with different colors. And let's choose, for example, this light blue, and it works. Or well, let's choose yellow. I love yellow, it's the color of sunflowers. Marvelous. Okay. Um, yes, now we have an idea how the messaging system between all those gadgets works. Um, some more words um, when you build a GUI with a panel. This is what we already have done here. Um, but let's um, change the gadgets. And when you want to delete a gadget, you have to select it, keep the right mouse button pressed and click the left mouse button and click like this and the gadgets vanishes. Okay, close the objects panel and now we're gonna uh, put some some buttons here. We put a button here and we put another button here. Drag it like this and the third button we put here. Okay, there's a second feature here in the gadgets panel that's very important to know that is a line. So when you select all those uh, gadgets and you go over to align, you can see there are different sub buttons. You can align the size, for example, you can align at the top uh, left, right button, vertically, horizontally. So if we uh, release our mouse button, I still hold it um, clicked, the left mouse button. Now I have it over left and I release it. You can see all those objects are aligned on the left side. And for example, let's deselect and 
Let's make one button a bit larger. Uh, you can enlarge the mouse button, uh, um, the place button, when you put the mouse pointer here on the right lower edge of the gadget and click the middle mouse button and hold it click and then you can resize it. Okay, now let's select all those gadgets again and let's see what happens if we click on a line and same size. Okay, it works. I think this is pretty cool stuff. This is something I was familiar from very modern program langu languages and IDEs and you can see that this feature already was implemented in the Oberon programming system back in the 1980s. I think that's really fascinating. And by the way, um, you also can store this whole configuration. So let's see if we can enlarge this panel a little bit. Like this, you can see uh, the store button. And now we're gonna click store. You can see here, the system says store test panel. And now we close it and hopefully we can reopen it. I hope you may remember opening anything on the Oberon desktop is done by desktops open dock and our panel was named test panel. Okay, now we place the carrot here because we want to appear our test panel here and we click on desktops open dock. Okay, it's not exactly the position I wanted, but you can see our panel is still here with all those positions and all those gadget sizes and it works. Okay, that's the end of the tutorial. In the next tutorial, um, we're gonna make a very, uh, very easy example of how to um, program some logic behind two gadgets, namely a text field and a button so that the button initiates um, that the contents of the text fields are somehow scrambled. So we have the first idea of how to connect a self-written module to uh, a test panel like you have seen it now. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you. Bye.